so now we're going to go over the, uh, the graphs page. It's this guy here. And we'll first do an offline simulation and show you what we're working with. Okay, so we're going to have all these three graphs tied to the same piece of data. That's just so that we can see what it looks like um, what the same piece of data displayed in, in different graph style would look like. Uh, so over here is a meter, this is a bar graph, and this is a trend graph. And I'll exit this. Okay, so the meter is pretty simple. You select an address to monitor. In this case, I'm going to use local word 100. Um, and then you define a range from 0 to 200 in this case. You can also define you know, what the shape is, so we could change it to something like a diamond. I'm using a thick line in this example. If you want to, you can display the uh, you can actually display the, the range, the numerical range there. I'm choosing to kind of let my graphic behind it uh, ex explain what's going on. And uh, that's about all you need to know there. Um, again, just like the other pages, we've got a, a graphic in the background that uh, kind of sets up most of the imagery on the page. Over here is a bar graph. I don't know that I mentioned where the meter is. Meter can be found right here. Uh, this guy's a bar graph, this one right here. And you can define the colors that you want to use, what direction it goes, what the values are it goes between, and then you select the particular uh, address that you want to monitor. In our case, again, it's just going to be um, address local word 100. You can also display ranges if you'd like to. Uh, this guy is the, is a trend, and he uh, you you define what the word is that you're wanting to monitor. We're again using local word 100, and um, you can define the, the color that you, you're wanting for the the pins, and um, it does it does require a trigger in order to, to be started and also requires a, a clear bit. These are both bits, so I'm using local bit 100, local bit 101. Uh, you, for this example, you wouldn't have to do anything with the clear unless you know unless you really wanted to clear it, but you would have to use the, uh, you would have to somehow turn local bit 100 on in order for it to start graphing. Um, in order to do that, uh, I've written a macro and we'll go through that. The macro is actually, in this example, how we're getting the, um, the number to change over time. You could implement that. Uh, you, you don't have to use macros. You can do it completely without macros, no problem at all. You can just use PLC code and, and the regular code here. Uh, in this case, I'm trying to not use a PLC in this example, just so you can turn on the device and you can see what uh, how it works without one. Um, but if, if you are open to using macros, they can add some pretty powerful stuff. Uh, so macros are found over here. You go to the macro editor, and you see we've got one macro here. And in it, uh, you can write some C code. So at the bottom here, you can tie in, you can define your local variables. Uh, so you may have noticed that I used local bit 100. Um, I used that in order to, uh, to, to say when we should be reading the graph. Um, so I, I've defined local bit 100 as read graph. And then inside the C code here, you see I assign it the value 1. So that turns it on, and that's what causes it to actually graph. And then um, the rest of this is real simple. We're just uh, going to be, as long as the value of step is less than 400, we'll keep incrementing it. Uh, once it goes to value 400, then it's going to be set to 0. And if it's um, if it's less than uh, 201, so if it's, in other words, if it's 0 through 200, then meter is going to be equal to that number. If not, it's going to be 400 minus it. So what that's going to cause it to do is it's going to cause our, our number to go from uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 200, and then it'll start backing down. It'll start going to 199, 198, 197. So that was just a way for us to, to display the data as it, it, it'll count up and then start counting back down. So that's all there is to it. It just consists of, uh, in this particular example, I've got some some data defined here that we're not not actually using. I could I could clean that up, um, and I'll do that for you. So 
So you see it's actually, there's just, a, just these three pieces of data to find here. We've got the step, the meter, and the read graph. Uh, so it's a pretty simple example here. When you get done with a macro, what you do is you compile it, and it actually, it'll go ahead and compile it and make sure you don't have any errors there. If I maybe was missing that semicolon, oops, uh, it would, it would, it would tell me there's a problem there. So you compile it, so it's successful. You can quit out of that, um, and then you can define, you can tell a macro uh, when to run in all kinds of ways. You could use a bit, and in the bit you could define a macro, and you could say, hey, I want to run this particular macro when this is pressed, uh, or um, in our case, I want to be using it and globally every so many milliseconds, so we use every 50 milliseconds. Um, you can also do some at initialization. Uh, so that's so you can see it's uh, that macro is controlling the value of LW100, and it's also turning this bit on. So when we when we do the offline simulation, it'll do what it's supposed to, and we can see that it's starting to starting to graph, it'll increment in value right up till it gets to 200, and then it'll start decrementing. In the next video, we'll go over the, uh, the recipes function.